Hey guys, this is part two of unit seven, lesson five. We are working with uh, quotients of radicals and exponents here. And we left off part one, sorry, wrong direction here. We left off part one with this fact. Fractional exponents and a denominator should also be rationalized because fractional exponents are just a different way to express radicals, and we can't have radicals in the denominator. And there will be times when we must multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So let's take a look at one with a fractional exponent here. Now this one was not originally in the slide, so I'm just going to put the original problem up here, and then we'll show how to do that by hand. So we need to simplify 5 divided by 3 to the 2 fifths. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 5 divided by 3 to the 2 fifths. This counts as a radical in the denominator. We can't leave that there. We need to get rid of that fractional exponent. So we are going to simplify here. We want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by something over itself. Uh, something over itself is just 1. And in order to get rid of this denominator, if we multiplied it by 3 to the 2 fifths, we would just have 3 to the 4 fifths. So we would still have a fractional denominator. The way that we're going to get rid of this 2 fifths is by multiplying it by 3 to the 3 fifths. And whatever we do to the top or bottom, we also have to do to the top. So that essentially we're just multiplying this by 1. Okay, the same thing over itself is 1. And when we do that, what we have on the top is 5 times 3 to the 3 fifths. And then on the bottom we have base 3, and then we can just add our exponents together, 3 to the 5 fifths. 3 to the 5 fifths is just 1. So 3 to the first power is just 3. And then our top is going to stay as 5 times 3 to the 3 fifths. Okay, unless we're told to put that into radical form, we can just leave it as a fractional, um, fractional exponent up there. We can't simplify this because we have two different bases. Uh, remember that in order to use our rules of exponents, our bases have to be the same. And we have a base 5 and we have a base 3. So there's no other way to simplify that. However, we got rid of the fractional exponent in the denominator, so we are done with that particular problem. All right, example four uh, has an example of when we're going to need to use a conjugate here. We have 8 minus the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 plus 2. We can't just multiply by the square root of 3 because then we would have 2 square root of 3 if we distributed that. Okay, so we need to multiply by the conjugate. We've got a binomial, so let's go ahead and multiply by the conjugate of root 3 plus 2, and that's root 3 minus 2. So root 3 plus 2 times root 3 minus 2. Whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. So we've got binomials here. Uh, at the bottom, we've got a difference of squares. So that's a pretty easy one to multiply. And then on the top, we're going to have to actually FOIL. All right, difference of squares says that we can take square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is just going to give us 3. And then we have square root of or, and 2 and 2. So we have at the bottom, oh, we're going to show the top first. <laughs> Let's do the top first. Uh, we've got a foil here. So first, 8 times the square root of 3. Uh, outside, 8 times negative 2, which is negative 16. Inside, negative square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is negative 3. And last, negative square root of 3 times negative 2 is positive 2 root 3. At the bottom, because of our difference of squares pattern, we end up with 3 minus 4. All right, so we have foiled the top. We've applied our difference of squares pattern in the denominator, and so now it's time for us to simplify. We can combine negative 16 and negative 3. We also can combine 8 root 3 plus 2 root 3. Remember, we can add and subtract radical expressions as long as the radical And the index are the same. So we have eight groups of root three and two groups of root three. That simplifies to 10 groups of root three. And negative 16 minus three is negative 19. And on the bottom we have three minus four, which is negative one. Well, we can take both of our constants here, our coefficient and our constant, and divide that by negative one to simplify even further. So that gives us a positive 19 minus 10 root three. 
according to our rules of simplification here, we don't have any perfect roots under the radical symbol. We have no fractions in our radicand, and we don't have any radicals in the denominator, so we have simplified our answer. All right, our last example together, example five, we're going to simplify 2 plus i divided by 3 minus i. The first thing we're going to do is to write that as a fraction. And remember that we have to rationalize this. We can't have imaginary numbers in our denominator because this really represents the square root of negative 1. So we still have a radical in our denominator, even though you don't see the radical symbol. So we do need to go ahead and rationalize that. And we're going to rationalize this binomial here by multiplying by the conjugate. So we're going to multiply by 3 plus i. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top so that we're just multiplying this whole thing by 1. We're not changing the value. We're just simplifying here. On the top, we do have to FOIL. So we have 2 times 3, which is 6. 2 times i, 2i. 3 times i, 3i. And i times i, which is i squared. As a quick reminder, i squared is equal to negative 1. We will go ahead and change that in just a minute here. On the bottom, we have our difference of squares pattern. So we have the square of our first, 3 times 3 squared. And then the square of our last, negative i times i, negative i squared. All right, now we can go ahead and we can combine like terms. We can also substitute in our negative 1 for i squared. So you can see we've substituted in our negative 1 for i squared here. In here, notice that when we substituted, there are parentheses here to protect that negative 1 because it is 9 minus i squared. And then we can combine like terms. Our 2i and our 3i can combine, and our 6 and our negative 1 can combine on the top. So we have 5 plus 5i over 10. But we're not completely simplified here because we do have uh, some, com some commonalities. On the top, let's go ahead and factor out a, a 5, or we can split these into two fractions, the a plus bi form. So there are two different ways that we can do this. We can split that into two fractions and then simplify, or we can factor out the 5 and simplify first. I think the example is going to show you how to factor out the 5 and simplify first. Okay. So if we factor out the 5, we get 5 times 1 plus i over 10. And then our 5 and our 10 simplifies to 1 over 2. So we're left with 1 plus i over 2. If you rewrote that as two fractions, you would have 5 over 10 plus 5i over 10. And 5 over 10 becomes 1 half. And then i over 2. So we have 1 half plus i over 2, which is just 1 plus i over 2. But to write that in our final a plus b i form, we would have 1 half plus 1 half i, or 1 half plus i over 2 would be acceptable as well. So you can see that there are a couple of different ways we could have simplified that. If I lost you in that simplification process, uh, what I would recommend that you do is this step right here. Split it into two fractions and then simplify your two fractions because that's what we want our final form to be, our real number and our imaginary number, 1 half plus 1 half i. All right, guys, that is what we had to do for today. So that was a shorter part two. Just as a reminder, here's what we did today. We divided radical expressions, we divided exponential expressions, and we rationalized radical expressions. And we know that radical and exponential expressions are simplified when there are no perfect powers in the radicand, there are no fractions in the radicand, and there are no radicals in the denominator. Don't forget your quotient property of radicals, which says if you've got a fraction in your radicand, you can rewrite that as root x over root y or vice versa. If you need to rewrite that as one fraction and simplify, you can do that as well. If you guys have any questions, be sure to write those down, and I'll see you next class.